Hi everyone, Tim Moore here. I finally got my Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 136 uh, rigged. I finally finished it with the coronavirus. Everything was on back order because of shutdowns and finally got everything that I needed to get it rigged. And I wanted to walk you through uh, some of how I rigged the fish finder and, and what I have for some of my accessories for various applications. Well, I guess I'll start uh, in the front and I'll go through some of the accessories. I run Scotty accessories uh, and generally um, just about every trip I have a um, camera pole um, on a gearhead that I can put my GoPro on. One of my GoPros and I wear one on my head. There are times when, um, very rare, but when I do do some trolling in the spring for salmon, uh, a lot of times I have more gearheads coming, so I, I'm just going to swap this one out, but I will put on uh, one of these um, bait cast or spinning, bait cast slash spinning rod holders. Now, one thing I'll tell you with gearheads and anybody that's already uh, done any trolling in a kayak, you know exactly where I'm going with this. Gearheads on the port or left side uh, aren't going to work with big fish because if you get a really big fish, like stripers or, or big salmon on some of the bigger uh, Great Lakes and it hits that, it's going to want to loosen that gear head. So I would go with the 241L mounts, which are the solid deck mounts which lock in. On the starboard side, it's not a big deal because it's only going to tighten it. Now trolling for salmon doesn't really matter. They don't ever hit hard enough to loosen these, so not a big deal. But like I said, I don't do a lot of trolling. Most of the time you will see a camera pole mounted there. This one here is just one of the forward facing rod holders. I typically use the other side, but it's on the trailer, so it's a little awkward. But drop my rod in there when I'm retying, rebaiting, uh, taking off a fish once I land one. Uh, that's generally, or if I'm going from, from place to place, you'll see uh, a rod in one of those forward facing rod holders. Before I get too far back, I will um, point out, I'll stay on the front here. My fish finder is a Humminbird Helix 9 uh, mega side and down imaging fish finder it's yeah it's it's big but I like to keep my fish finder as far away as I can and still be able to see it and I'm not getting any younger so uh, I do um, run a big fish finder I like the big screen I can also run this same unit on my boat just swap it out now I have uh, this on a ball mount Scotty uh, fish finder mount with a, a gear track one and a half inch ball and it's a little wiggly, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's it's not going anywhere. And one trick with the fish finder mount is to make sure that the ball is over these double screws somewhere because they're a lot more solid than if you slide it back away from the screws. There's more flex in that track. It's not going anywhere. It's fine just like it is. I ran it that down through uh, and back out here to my down to my. Um, mega imaging transducer that I have mounted on the bottom. I, I thought about going with the sidearm so that I could swap it. I just didn't want to deal with all the extra cable and I knew that I was going to be using this boat a lot and I wanted that mega imaging because I'll probably do a fair amount of pike and crappie fishing out of this boat and some stripers and I wanted to be able to use that side imaging for when I'm fishing at night in shallow water. And then the power cable comes back I, I put I have an amp, 18 amp hour um, lithium battery amped outdoors and I will put that in the hatch I, so I ran my wiring back here to this hatch and I'll give you a shot of that here so you can see I have a two flat uh, quick disconnect and I also glued some uh, pool noodle I cut a pool noodle in half and notched the middle so water could run out and I just siliconed it down to the bottom to keep my battery from sliding down to where I can't reach it fishing around for my battery. Back up front we'll talk about the motor. This, uh, this is a 45 pound thrust saltwater rated motor and it drops down it's this boat. It's integrated into this boat. Now this kayak comes with this hatch cover that you can leave on to paddle or you can bring it back here and there is a recess place to store it. I leave it in when I'm store when I'm transporting my kayak. The motor drops in super simple. Just drop these two tabs, just set the motor in place, and just lock it in just like that. I mean, it's, it couldn't be much easier than that. 
One tip I want to share as far as these plugs go. Now, I keep a lot of dielectric grease on my terminals, on the plug end and on the receptacle, especially because I use my boats in salt water so much. I rinse them, yes, but I'm constantly uh, putting the dielectric grease because these will corrode and they'll pull out and it's not the fault of the manufacturer if you don't keep them uh, greased up with that dielectric grease, but they get dirt. That grease will stick to the dirt and you set the motor down. If there's dirt in the bottom of your boat, <clears throat> excuse me, it's gonna pick up sand and you're gonna shove that in there. And what's gonna happen, it's gonna bind up these pins and when you pull it out, it's gonna pull the pins out. Again, not the fault of the manufacturer, you gotta keep them clean. So I just put a sandwich bag on mine and then I just zip it around it and I unplug it and that keeps the dirt off of off of the re off of the plug uh, and then I can just take this and, and shove it in any of the storage compartments while I'm using the, the kayak um, so you know plug and play I guess they've even been nice enough to mark the top of the plug and that goes in plugs in there's a magnetic kill switch so once you get that hooked up there you want to hook the cable on there and then to deploy super easy you just pull the handle line up your prop pull the handle and lock it down now one thing you want to you want to make sure of now you see that motor even though the base is seated the motor can still come down you want to get that seated all the way down that way the collar can connect and um, it won't just rotate, it won't just spin freely. See, I can I even went down a little bit more just to lock that in. So that's locked. Um, your battery box plugs in back here under the seat. It's just simple. Now I run a 100 amp hour uh, lithium battery from Amped Outdoors. It weighs about just barely over 25 pounds, which means I can carry this around with one hand. Uh, the days when the when the Predator MK came out with that Minn Kota console, lugging those 60-pound batteries around, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional guide, and some days I'll run two trips in a day, which means I have to have two batteries ready and swapping the batteries out. Lugging them back and forth was just, was not, it was one of the least more, least enjoyable parts of my job. So having this 25-pound battery that I can carry around with one hand and just really just, just swing it around as needed is, is a really breath of fresh air. Uh, new seat. I like the seat. My, my PFD that I wear is Old Town Lure Angler PFD. It has uh, all the pockets that I need. It, it, it works great for me and it's super comfortable. Um, it has this air comfort system uh, to help them breathe in the summertime. And uh, a mesh, mesh high back that's designed to fit up over the top of your seat, which is nice, really comfortable. That's my PFD. Uh, the new seat, they've added some padding into it. Uh, this is a super nice seat. And then uh, has a high position, or you can drop it down into a low position, which would be really especially helpful on days when you were paddling, uh, or if you get a lot of wind, if you get a lot of weight in here, etc. Uh, my net, this is the new Fortis net from Clam Outdoors. I've added some pool noodle onto that just to give it a little extra buoyancy should it fall over. Hopefully, I'll have time to go back. I don't know, I'm not going to test it. But if when this handle fills up with water, which it will, I don't know if it's enough. It should be enough to keep it afloat, but at least it'll give me some time. That's that's my net. Uh, I put um, rocket launcher, Scotty rocket launchers, back here in gear track mounts, so they're easy to take on, off, and put back on um, during transport or, or whatever. Uh, I have a one-inch ball back here. That is for my Scotty uh, light pole for when I'm fishing at night. I, I meant to put that on there, but that's what that's for. One other thing I want to point out is the storage over here on this side. There's dry storage, a ton of stuff. I keep my, my remote and the kill switch. There's another kill switch for this side here. That it is, does need to be in, and you can clip that to your PFD in case you ever fell out. The motor is not going to kick off without you, just like in a boat, and the remote I can wear around my neck, and it's the, uh, it is the power drive 45 pound thrust saltwater motor, I have a power drive 55 pound on my boat, the remote is the exact same, the only difference is they have removed the jackrabbit button that goes automatically goes to 10, 
uh, just in testing there were a couple of occasions where we uh, had the motor sideways and hit that uh, on 10 on accident hit that jackrabbit button and it really takes off and it could throw you out of the boat so they just took, took that feature off of the remote otherwise it's the same remote control spot lock love the spot lock feature in this being able to just get over whether whether it's rocks on for tatog or black sea bass or uh, jigging lake trout or uh, sitting on top of a school of crappies doesn't matter wind no wind current this motor will hold you in place very very well for a very long period of time um, even though if you have a, a good battery on there so so i hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough hope it was helpful like i said it's not the only way to rig a boat but it's how i have mine rigged and i'm really excited